everybody. Welcome to this edition of Expat Chat. Today, I am with my new friend, Juan. Hi. I got to meet Juan uh, a couple of weeks ago, just by chance, and he has the coolest store here in Puerto Los Cabos. And I walked in, and you were so friendly and so passionate about your store and your art, and your story was incredible. So I said to you at the time, like, I have to come back and interview you. And you were Thank like, you. sounds good. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your background and where you're from. So I'm originally from Mexico City. Uh, I was born in Mexico City, but I grew up in Monterey, Mexico, okay. the northern part. Uh -huh. uh, since I was young, my life was sports. I grew up playing tennis. Um, and then I, I moved to the States when I was 17 to okay. play tennis. Uh, at that time, I never painted anything. You know, I didn't even know I had talent for painting wow. and, and design. It was just uh, tennis. Talk about how you discovered you could... My design yeah, and my like, art? Like, how does this... Like, is how is this in you and you didn't know? Yeah, so after my triathlon career, I ended up being sponsored by a gentleman called Bill Bardman. Okay. And so after a few months working for him, he told me, he said, Juan, I don't care about your sports. He said, the only thing I care about is that you use your talents to inspire people. Hmm. So anyway, that got stuck with me. Stuck um, with you. Then I finished and I went to L.A. I was coaching tennis in Beverly Hills. And it was great. I was like, you know, making a lot of money. I felt like there was something more that I was not going to be just tennis pro for the rest of my mm -hmm. life. Um, and one day I was at a friend's house and there was a napkin and a Sharpie and I made a doodle. And yeah, I just, I was bored. Uh, and a lady that was there, she was like, oh, are you an artist? I said, no. And uh, she said, well, uh, you need to be one. Wow. And I'm like, okay, I thought she was crazy. Wow. Uh, but I listened to her. Uh -huh. So I went uh, a few weeks later and I bought a piece of wood, literally, Home Depot, and I bought an acrylic paint in Walmart and I made my first painting. It took me like five months, you know, but every night I would sit and, and paint. And then when I finished it, I was like, wow, this is cool, you know. Um, but everybody was like, you know, you're crazy, yeah. you're wanting to become an artist. Yeah. Uh, but I was like, no, like I felt there was, there was something there, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I kept at it. At the beginning, it was just art like this, you mm -hmm. know, more original acrylic on canvas. I had a, a friend of mine, she was the manager at the Apple store in Beverly Hills. Okay. And I took a job there just in between leaving tennis and, and you know, uh, doing my art. And there, uh, one of the first iPhones came out. And one day I started doing, uh, just painting on the phone. Wow. Uh, and from there, it came my graphic uh, art which I made a few t-shirts, I uh, started wearing them as uh -huh. well. And people were like, oh, cool, your t-shirts are cool. One day I painted my jeans and I started going in LA on the streets and people were like, hey, cool jeans. Um, and eventually I did run out of money. Yep. And so literally one day I had $50 left. Um, yeah, like very, I didn't live in Beverly Hills anymore. I had given up my, every, all the material things I had, I had given them up. And uh, I thought, you know, I'm going to move back to Mexico. And so I did. I went back to Mexico City and I went to an uncle of mine. I said, hey, would you invest in my brand? And he said, no. And I was like, okay. And then I said, can I stay in your house? And he said, no. <laughs> so I was like, okay, okay great. Okay, thanks. All the, all the doors were shut. No, no, no. Yeah, no. I, I mean, there was no everywhere. <laughs> right. Um, so I went, uh, I booked a $5 a night room. Wow. Downtown Mexico City. Wow. It was a big room with bunk beds. And it was like, you know five six dollars a bed <laughs> and uh, so i'm staying there and uh, every day i went to starbucks okay and i would sit at starbucks and paint on my phone and one day came this lady and sat next to me and we started talking and she asked me what i did uh so i showed her my designs she said oh i make notebooks and she was like you should make some notebooks with your designs and so anyway ended up uh, making 10 notebooks and within a few weeks, I was selling them in, inside Starbucks without anybody knowing. You know, just wow, sitting there yeah. with the notebooks on the, uh -huh. on the table. And then a few months later, I went to the manager and I said, hey, would you let me sell the notebooks in the counter where people pay? Mm -hmm. Eventually, she let me wow. uh, sell them. And that Starbucks in 2011 became my first store, gallery, and uh, office. Wow. For, for two years. For two years. For two years. That is so um, incredible. Yeah. And so there I started developing the vision mm -hmm. of uh, first he was selling there, obviously, but I'm like, I'm not going to stay there, you know. Right. Um, then I started doing collaborations. 
So I started contacting brands like Kleenex. Yeah, I saw your Kleenex. So cool. Thank you. So unique. Yeah, so I, I just started calling big brands. And then while I worked at the Apple store in Beverly Hills, when they came, this guy who is, the, well, he was from Dubai, and he gave me his card. And then when I checked who he was, he's the guy that owns the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building in the world. Uh, yeah. Wow. So really, like, after I realized who he was and I was already you wow. know, building my brand, I emailed him. And within a few months, I was in Dubai. And then I became like the first Latin American artist to have my work shown at the Burj Khalifa. Oh, my God, um, Juan. That is crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I mean, sometimes you like people complain a lot of like, why is this happening to me? Like. You know, for me, I could have complained, like, why did I end up... In a $5 a night n- bunk bed. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, sometimes you don't realize that those situations, if you, you know, if you don't complain and if you're not negative, and instead of, like, to look at the opportunities, mm-hmm. uh, those become the biggest opportunities, you know, in life. Life, life changing. Yeah, life, totally life changing, you know. So then, um, I mean, you asked me how I ended up in San yeah. Jose. Yeah, yeah. So I kept building the brand uh, until the pandemic, you know, so I've, mm. I've done a lot of collaborations with many brands around the world. Then I started set designing for tourist destinations okay. in New York. Uh, I started coming here because I designed here for Hilton, uh, Solas, for the Cape. I was, I was doing merchandise programs, okay. but with my designs. Uh-huh. So I started coming a lot. And then the pandemic came and it was the, you know, everything was shot. Yeah. Um, and during the pandemic, I was like, you know, I need to open a shop, but I don't want to just open like a retail shop because in the end, my goal is to inspire people to follow their dreams as well as yeah, sell all the, all the things that we make, you know? Um, so started coming and the more I came, I'm like, like, hey, there's something here, you know, mm-hmm. there's opportunities. Um, and actually one day after my first trip here, um, I came, I was sitting at cream cafe yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and the girl sat next to me and we just started talking and I told her a little bit of what I did. And she said, you need to open a shop like mm-hmm. here, you know, so I kept coming every, I didn't know anyone, but her and the people that I was selling at the mm-hmm. hotels. And, um, I kept coming, coming, coming until one day I met uh, John Pence, who's the, yeah. the owner of this plaza yeah. in San Jose mm-hmm. and, uh, told him my story and he was like, start here, you know, it's, it's a new space. So here we are, you know, we open in uh, January. Um, but I always tell people, you know, like this is not the end yeah, this of is the what beginning. I'm doing. This is the beginning, this is you the know, beginning. one of the things that I think I'm hearing in your story that I mm-hmm. think is so fascinating is that there have been key people in your life who have inspired you to follow your dreams, mm-hmm. to um, try something that you didn't really know that you were capable of. Mm-hmm. And I think it's so fascinating that you're doing that same thing for other people mm-hmm. now. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing for the, the San Jose locals to help mm-hmm. them understand how to follow their dreams? So uh, when I opened the shop, like I opened it January 6th, I just came by myself. Like there was no one here 6th of January. Yeah. You know, we were like three shops open. And uh, I'm like, no, I need to start bringing people in, you know? Mm-hmm. So I started doing the Dream Big Talks. And we do them every Friday at 6.30 p.m. Um, and we've had, you know, from singers to architects, uh, designers, uh, and then we're inviting people, you know, um, also last Friday we projected the Burj Khalifa, uh, yeah. that, you know, my, my designs that were at the Burj Khalifa, we wow. turned the lights off and we just projected it on the wall. And I told the story how I ended up there. So in the end, it's become like just a space to inspire. And it's like this creative environment when you're hanging out with other creatives. Mm-hmm that help you realize that there really aren't boundaries. The Mm -hmm. only boundaries that you have are kind of in your own mind. Mind You you do them for yourself. And I also think people are afraid to be out. Yeah. You know, Um, like I I cannot be in, I mean, everything I build is because I've been out. Yes. You know, I give conferences, I have my books. I mean, when I started giving conferences, like people didn't pay me. Yeah, you know, just, and you I just did it. I just did it. They were like, "Hey, would you come to South Africa?" Sure. I, I mean, I I traveled the world, me paying everything. But in the beginning, I, I mean, I, I've spoken in many different countries, and now obviously they pay me. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I, I think sometimes if people are really passionate, if they say they're really passionate about what they do, 
um, I think sometimes you need to do it. Just move, move, move forward, mm -hmm. do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love that you're doing that and you're creating this environment here where people feel more confident to do that. Mm -hmm. So, so you're, you have a background in tennis, so that's kind of your experience. So I have to ask you before we go, like, what do you mm -hmm. think about pickleball? Think yeah. Like, do you play pickleball? Do you think it's, you know, what do you think? Cause it's taken over San Jose. It's taken over Cabo. Yeah. 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 Um, so to be honest, about two months ago, I was like, uh, like I think it's just not so much fun, yeah. especially if you play tennis right. like, all so, your life yeah. and you're good at. And you're like, oh, it's probably a game for old people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. And so uh, when was it? Two weeks ago, a friend of mine, she plays at Querencia. So she's like, hey, come play, you know, mixed doubles. So I went and I'm like, okay, well, it's not as easy as it looks. Isn't it? You know, I've never played. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it's not. But anyway, I did, you know, I did well with that level. And then the next day, I got a thing on online, the pickable tournament in uh, Los Barriles. Yes. And so I'm like, oh, I'm going to sign up. And then I, <laughs> You're I, not afraid of anything, are you? <laughs> I, I signed up for Open Division. Oh, my God. <laughs> and I thought I was going to win. And I'm like, of course you did. <laughs> okay, I'm a really good tennis player. Right. I'm going to win this. And uh, oh, my God, to my surprise. <laughs> My first game was against like the number one ranked player oh in Mexico. God. I was twenty years old. Oh, of course, and no old people. That, that, that was my <laughs> my first game, and uh, I made one point in two sets. <laughs> Congratulations! Then, yeah, I know. <laughs> and then I was like, "Oh my god, this is not as fun as yeah. I thought." I mean, I mean, it, it was fun, but, but not as easy. No, not as easy, you know. Yeah. And then I got to play a consolation match. And it was against another guy. He was a little bit older, and he didn't seem so so in such, such in good shape. Yeah. And uh, it was one set, the second consolation, and I didn't make any points. He beat me fifteen <laughs> zero. <laughs> That's my, so humbling, my, right? My mom, she went with me and a friend, and I was like, "My God, like I cannot hit." I mean, I tried. I mean, I played tennis all my right. life. I can play tennis, right? You know? And uh, I made one point in two games. Embarrassing. So it was very embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, yeah, this is fun. So I need to, I told those guys, I'm like, man, I thought it was much easier. Yeah. Well, maybe you need to stick to art. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, you know, keep playing or, or practice. Or practice. You know, yeah. I think I need to go and, yeah. uh, and practice, but uh, I don't know. You should brand some like uh, pickleball paddles and mm -hmm. pickleball shirts and, you know, start, you know, brand those and start selling those when you're. Yeah. After the tournament, I did some pickleball designs. Perfect. Uh, so I'm going to start doing like some t-shirts and the paddles. Uh -huh. um, so I'm also thinking of, you know, starting the line and, and yeah. start selling it here in the store and online. Yeah. So anyway, it's, um, it's fun. Thank you so much for taking Thank time you. to talk to us today. And what's the best way for people to reach you? Um, online, we, our website is juandelascurain.com and social media, it's all Juan de Lascurain. And the shop is here in La Playita at Lupor Plaza in San Jose. We're really close by where, you know, the marina is. Yes, I love the Friday night thing. Yeah. This is a good way to come check it out. Come every yes. Friday night here. Friday night at uh, 6.30 p.m. Um, we're always here. Yeah, that's yeah. great. That's great. Thank so. you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.